Uh, overall, what would be your assessment of this year's Le Mans performance? And uh, you've stated a few things that you've learned from it, but anything else you care to share with us as far as your learning curve from Le Mans and being in the GT2 uh, class category now? Well, you know, as I say, you, you, we learn something every single time we go out. Now, obviously, this was a this was a, a steep learning curve for us. However, uh, I'm, I'm always a half full guy. I mean, I look at the silver lining. We, we went out there, and uh, uh, for the very first time at Le Mans, we had uh, we, we we didn't have the fastest car down that side, but we but we were able to compete down that side. And, and in the past, we've always had cars that had superior braking and superior handling, and then we'd have to give it back. Uh, you know, the Corvette's a rather large car compared to Porsche and Ferrari, they push more final area. Right. But, the, but the engineers have dedicated themselves, dedicated themselves to, to finding, uh, you know, aerodynamic advantage in the body shape and the size that we do have um, to, 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 to help us reduce drag, continue to have great downforce. It, it was just, it was really heartening, I think, to everybody to see us there, and not to mention that the power that we were able to develop in the new five and a half liter engine, uh, despite the failure, uh, you know, we had great horsepower. Uh, we've got some work to do on fuel economy, and uh, and and obviously get that valve situation resolved. Um, but I think all in all, when we look at how uh, we uh, acquitted ourselves, we, we look at it, we acquitted ourselves quite well, and I think we, were, you know, we left there on a positive. Uh, we're almost at the halfway point of the season uh, with uh, uh, Jan and Johnny 25 points off the lead and the uh, two Olivers 33 back. Um, what, in your opinion, do both teams need to do to make a run at the championship for the second half of this season? Well, quite frankly, if you, if you do the math, we've got to win races. If, if we're to capture a championship, uh, we can't be satisfied with anything short of victory. Uh, we, have to, we have to win at, 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 at every opportunity. The, the other issue you have is that the other fields are deeper. There's, you know, there's, uh, I think there's going to be an additional Ferrari, which brings the Ferrari count to three. You know, there's a, actually I shouldn't say that, there's one to the big Ferrari count to five. Uh, there's four or five Porsches that are running. So it makes it, and BMW, two BMWs, it makes it very difficult to, uh, in the way the points are structured, uh, to, to make headway. You know, lose, losing points at Sebring was, uh, was, was a crushing blow for us. And it, it put us in a situation where uh, it's going to require very, very, very strong finishes in every event. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you for a minute. Um, describe a typical work day in the life of Doug Fee and his manager, of course. Yeah, well, no, not really. I mean, I, 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 I'm usually up between 5 and 5 30 in the morning. Uh, I'll check e emails from Europe because they're already up and operational. I head to the gym for a couple hours, work out, get back home, get on email again head into the office, uh, do whatever needs to be done there, and uh, head back home and continue on with emails, and I usually get to bed about midnight. That's a, that's a long day. Yeah, but, but, it's, but it's enjoyable. I, I mean, I love doing it. You couldn't pay somebody to do this that, 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 that didn't love it. I do. I have a huge passion for it. It's fun. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I feel very fortunate to have been able to be a part of it all. Certainly evident uh, from you, no doubt. Um, what are your interests outside of racing? Uh, what do you do? What do you enjoy doing? How do you de-stress, get away, relax? Hobbies? You know, I, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I have varied interests. Uh, from a sports standpoint, uh, golf is my you know, secondary sports passion. Uh, I don't get an opportunity to play much anymore, but, but I still love it. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the gym, a lot of time in the swimming pool, a lot of time on my bicycle. Yeah, I found uh, at this stage of my life that that's a, that's a great escape from the rigors of, of daily corporate life. Um, I uh, compete in, uh, in, in uh, cycling events, uh, triathlons, and that sort of thing. I use that as a, as a, as a diversion. Uh, and on that, I really enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it serves a great purpose, keeps me in reasonable shape, and it gives me a chance to get away from it all. Awesome, awesome. Final question. Uh, if you stepped away from Corvette racing today, what yeah. single thing would be your proudest accomplishment? What would you say, this is what I hang my hat on? You know, aside from the victories, which is what usually everyone is measured by, I mean, that's usually what they say, and, and, and that plays a huge role. There's no question about that. But as, as I've matured and, and spent more time in this, I, I think as I walked away, I, I, would, I would look 
at the opportunity to work with the people that I've worked with. Uh, some of these people I've been associated with for well over 20 years. So I've watched them come in as, as just very, very young men. I've watched them get married, raise families. I've watched them succeed. I, I, I see the looks on their faces when we're successful. And uh, that's really, really, really what I think I, I find most rewarding. Is just being able to, 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 to keep this thing going and provide them an environment to do the things that they love to do. Um, for me, it's a, it's, it's a people deal. Uh, that's, it's just uh, it's, it's difficult to articulate uh, the feeling you get when you when, when you see. Uh, and it's you know it's the same thing that people experience in clubs and just by having the car and getting a little bit more involved. You hear all the time. Uh, I've met people that I never would have met were it not for the car. That's amazing that you make that analogy. Well, yeah, that's 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 the way it is. Uh, our success certainly you need the, the mechanical. I mean, you need a great vehicle. But you can't do it without great people. And I've been blessed to, to, to have been associated with, with what I think are the, the greatest people in the industry. From you know, from, from Gary Pratt and Jim Miller, uh, right on down to all the crew people. It's 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 just a, it, I, 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 I like I said I feel totally honored, blessed and, and humbled by how hard those people work and the level of dedication that they have. It, it makes my efforts in, in trying to make this thing